कुमार सामी नायक है बोम वाली बुलेटो का रेडियो फिजी टू में पुराना गाना लगे हमें बहुत अच्छा लगे रेडियो फिजी टू देश की धड़कन Good evening, Fiji. In this bulletin, dark days will be over, assures Prime Minister. Combined effort needed to curb crime. And Lifeline Fiji registers a majority of calls from the north. From the studios of FBC Suba, Jackie Spade. Prime Minister Vurenge Mbani Marama says while the Fijian economy has slowed down due to the effects of COVID-19, the country will come out of this dark period stronger than ever. The Prime Minister highlighting that a lot has been sacrificed and hard decisions have been made, but these were necessary steps. He made the comments while commissioning the Nayabu Community Police Post in Tailevu yesterday. Pranita Prakash reports. With the economy slowing down due to the pandemic and the society struggling for its health, the Prime Minister says it is up to the government to be the locomotive that keeps us going. We are sacrificing a lot right now, but there are limits to how much I will ask you, my fellow citizens, to sacrifice. We have established a curfew and we ask our police to enforce it, which they do. And we were forced to close the country to visitors. Both of those were hard decisions, but they were necessary. But building and creating jobs is also necessary. Baini Marama says rebuilding facilities and infrastructure are critical to stimulate economic growth. They provide good jobs for Fijians. They provide jobs for Fijians who do the building. They provide jobs for Fijians who supply building materials and services. And when those people get paid, they buy things they need. They buy food and clothing and school supplies and household goods. And that creates more jobs and more income for families. The Prime Minister opened the Nayabu Community Post yesterday with sustained structural damage during tropical cyclone Winston. Extensive renovation has been carried out on the post. Pranita Prakash, FBC News. Meanwhile, the Prime Minister says while the effects of COVID-19 has put a tremendous strain on government revenues, they believe education is the greatest investment. He made the comments while opening the new teachers' quarters at Tailevu North College. Baini Marama says education is a long-term investment, something that pays off returns a generation on from now. He says with the opening of the new quarters, teachers will now live comfortably. Over half a million dollars has been invested in the new teachers' quarters. No teacher should spend their days making long, difficult trek just to get to work. Your community has uh, uh, seen how unreliable that can be. On days uh, with heavy rain, your teachers would find themselves stranded on the wrong side of floods affecting the Nosori and Korovo highways. But reports of rain, uh, reports of rain, shouldn't uh, determine whether or not class at the Telebu North College is in session. So we've built these new quarters to give your teachers a home on this campus, making each of them full members of the Telebu North College community. The Fiji Police Force plans to engage more stakeholders of the Greater Nausori and Nakasi areas in a thorough consultation to ensure the two urban centres are free from any form of criminal activities. Officer in charge for Nausori, ASP Sunil Chan, believes these stakeholders are primary witnesses of everything that evolves within the town boundaries. Josiah Nanunga reports roping these stakeholders in the discussion panel will assist the force in the Nausori Chamber of Commerce to come up with concrete plans to curb criminal activities. The Fiji Police Force aims to engage other stakeholders in its efforts to reduce illegal activities and crime in the Nosori and Makasi corridor. Coordination of consultation with stakeholders is another one, okay, and we hope to see more of this as such uh, uh, with the inclusion of the, the bus companies, the market vendors, uh, which are already here, but we want to have more meetings with them. Following several complaints of theft, glue sniffing and drug peddling in the vicinity in broad light, a task force has been established to take hold those accountable for breaking the law. That group that we have, 
It's just like if you see somebody smoking in a public place on that group and that inspector is down there within seconds. Because our town is not very big, so it's within the CBD. So it's working very well. We've seen the number of achievements uh, that have been done in terms of the search profiles and the arrests that have been done individually. It will be a uphill battle. But as a team, you've seen within six days or seven what we have achieved. Increased police presence since last week in these areas has led to 15 arrests. Police have managed to apprehend seven people found drinking in public places, four were drunk and disorderly, three were in possession of illegal substances, another three have been charged with theft, while four failed to comply with orders. Josai Yadanuga, FBC News. Almost 50% of the calls received by government, non-government organization Lifeline Fiji is from the Northern Division. Team leader Jerry Merikula says this is why they've moved to the north to create awareness in an effort to address issues faced by these callers. Sanyani Boiler reports. The calls made are mostly in relation to domestic violence, financial issues and attempted suicide. Lifeline Fiji is now equipping police so they can better handle these issues. The things that we try to do is that we try to work uh, around with uh, stakeholders that are available in the north uh, to try to respond to these, uh, these cases that come up. Eh? Regional Manager Community Policy North ASP Uliasi Talimbula says the training will enhance their approach towards those affected. It will assist uh, our police officers uh, in confronting a situation on uh, suicide and uh, coming up with stress, uh, uh, patients and other issues, uh, new issues that we are facing here in the Northern Division. How to approach them and uh, upskilling uh, our police officers in facing this kind of uh, situation. ASP Talimbula also highlighted that they are working closely to deal with other issues which includes theft, burglaries and sexual offences. Saini Animboila, FBC News. An internal affairs investigation is underway following a police motor vehicle accident in Suva yesterday. Acting Commissioner Rusiate Tundrabu has directed the officer to be removed from driving as investigation continues. He says necessary steps will be taken after the report is submitted. Up ahead, demand for farmland increases. And over $40,000 raised during Shave or Save campaign. My Radio Fiji Radio Fiji Radio Fiji 2, Deshki Dharkan. impacts of COVID-19 is being felt by all sectors in the country. The real estate industry has seen the emergence of a new market. The Real Estate Agents Licensing Board has noted an increase in demand for and sales of farmland. Kritika Kumar has more. Many Fijians have lost their jobs due to the pandemic and they are now resorting to farming to sustain their livelihoods. The people living in towns and cities wanting to own something where they can live and do some farming as well. So there's always so, some new opportunities that will come about. Hemant Kumar says the real estate market's growth is slow. However, the demand for farmland has created activities. The Talanoa feedback we got, it was exactly for that reason. So a lot of people in town who have some money that they can invest, they were looking at alternatives where they could either put somebody on the farm to farm or they themselves would be there and farming and having some alternative means of earning a living. During a Talanoa session with the agents, it was revealed that agents in the Western Division are repositioning themselves to create activities in the market. And of course, the, we know the obvious reason is that they want to have something of their own in terms of the crops and all the vegetables and other things that they can uh, plant. Uh, in, in those uh, farms they will buy. The ongoing pandemic and its impact on the economy has led to a decrease in property sales and owners who are eager to sell their properties are reducing the prices. Kritika Kumar, FBC News. 
Five chiefs of missions took up the challenge last night and shaved their heads to support children battling cancer. These ambassadors collectively raised over $40,000 as part of the Wow's Kids Fiji Shave or Save fundraising event, more than the initial target of $30,000. Venena Rakautonga has more. A first of its kind and definitely not the last for these ambassadors who are eager to support the fight against cancer. We've uh, reached and exceeded uh, that target just in the last few hours. It's really heartening to see. Uh, there are 71 uh, Fijian children and their families uh, battling cancer uh, at the moment and it's really important that we try and find the resources to help them beat it too. Wow's Kids Fiji Foundation co-founder Taholo Kami says with the pandemic funding is difficult for many charitable organizations so help like this means a lot for them. It's a tough journey and we all know that and this year with COVID we were all aware that it's not going to be the same thing for any charity and um, you know for it's the, it's the first someone asked me before this um, how many ambassadors have done this before? I said, I think this is the first time, and there's five of you. U.S. Ambassador to Fiji Joseph Seller says it was a delight to team up with other ambassadors. And we as ambassadors, I think, um, have a unique obligation to adhere to that from a unique uh, station and uh, represent our countries and loving the community that we're in that we love so dearly, especially those that are uniquely in need. Wow's Kids Fiji Shave or Save is a successful fundraising initiative where volunteers or nominees donate their hair or money to raise awareness on child cancer. Veni Narakautonga, FPC News. The Agriculture Ministry is working towards enhancing product development in an effort to deal with an ever-growing market. Minister Dr. Mahendra Reddy, while opening one of Fiji's largest farming nurseries in Sambeto Nandi yesterday, highlighted that some agricultural products can be reused to produce other goods as a means of generating revenue. Chasai Nanunga reports. The minister revealed plans are in place to ensure farmers are able to market all their produce. Going forward, we will be launching a revised unit in Coronavia Agriculture Registration, which will concentrate on developing products so that we expand your market. We don't want a situation where you complain to us that there is flooding in the market with regard to agriculture commodities. Sambeto Advisory Councillor Vinesh Rai stated the farmers are grateful that the ministry is contracting farmers as it will ensure their produce don't go to waste. This uh, COVID-19 shouldn't be a reason for planting because we have started somewhere three years back. And uh, you know, very soon uh, we have more projects coming in. And uh, you know, we, now we have a 70,000 chili, we have in salary. We have a carrot uh, plantation very soon coming in uh, Vaturu Dam near Dam. So it, uh, it will be like a one-stop shop. Meanwhile, the minister is urging farmers and suppliers to become members of the Fiji National Provident Fund. He stressed this will help secure their livelihoods. Chosa Yenanuga, FBC News. Seagrass plays an important role in the natural ecosystem to conserve and protect marine life. Launching the Seagrass Nursery in Maui Bay, Singatoka yesterday, Minister for Waterways Dr. Mahindra Reddy highlighted that seagrass also helps in sediment retention and prevents coastal erosion. Dr. Reddy says human behavior such as improper solid waste disposal and for coastal development is threatening its existence. It is in this regard that Ministry of Waterways and Environment collaboratively are working together to ensure that our coastal areas are protected from these intrusions which can indirectly negatively undermine or affect the, uh, the development of marine ecosystems such as the seagrass uh, ecosystem. In sports tonight, Rewa qualify for BOG final. And Naita Siri defeats Nandronga in Skipper Cup competition. This and more after the break. Pula, nandang gua proslan ngerse, gua irkeraki. Lo televe on varong na radio Fijuan, nandong iviti. Radio Fijuan, nandong iviti.
The Delta One Automotive Repairs Rewa beat Priceline Pharmacy by on a penalty shootout to qualify for the Punjas Battle of the Giants final. Both teams were locked to all after extra time, but Rewa defeated Bar 10 9 in penalty shootout. Karolani Tavi has more. So now looks at what he's going to do. The men in black fought hard from a 2 0 down to take the match into extra spell. Josiah Salah scored the first goal in the 33rd minute but got injured in the process and was stretched off the field of play. Setareki Hughes extended Rewa's lead with the second goal in the 39th minute. The Ronil Lalko side came back with Naren Rao pulling one back for after the breather in the 68th minute and Abu Zahid scoring the equalizer in the 91st minute. But it was Rewa's Inoki Turangalela's final penalty for Rewa that sealed the spot in the final. Rewa coach Marika Rondo says it was a team effort that gave them the win. All I can say is uh, I'm failing my job to give credit to the Lord. Because the, the way the game went, we don't deserve to be in the final. Give the credit to the boys for their composure. They kept fighting till the end. So it's a bit emotional time for me. I think the boys deserve to, uh, to go back and prepare for the game tomorrow. Places, there's a fighting spirit in them. That's the was positive thing I was uh, I get from out of uh, in the team, and the plus the support, they try to eat, support each other during the game. Meanwhile, Rewa forward Josiah Sella is injured and will not feature in the finals. Karlini Tavi, FBC Sports. The second semi-final between all-in-one builders Nandi and Flow Valve's Island Accommodation Suva is currently underway at Churchill Park in extra time and Suva is currently leading 2-1. Naita Siri held a mighty Nandranga side 9-6 to, to win round four of the Skipper Cup competition at Lawanga Park in Singatoka today. A match anticipated to be a thriller lived up to expectations as both teams fought tooth and nail until the final whistle. Karolani Tavi has more. Visitors got on the scoreboard first through the boots of Twindraki Samusamu Vondre minutes into the first half to lead 3-0. Nandranga Shoeli Lutumailangi chipped a penalty to equalize the score three all into the second half. Highlanders fly half Samu Samu Vondre then put Naita Siri back to a 6 3 lead after the Stellans were penalized for foul play. But minutes later, the visitors considered a penalty, seeing Lutumailangi equalize again for the host. Samu Samu Vondre's dropped goal made a difference in the last minute of play as the side came away with a 9 6 win. Naita Siri captain Israel Kalozava says they were able to execute their game plan. We were able to execute everything we came to achieve here today. The team played their part, and so did the team officials for helping us. We are able to make a comeback from last week's loss and be able to get us a win over Nandunga this afternoon. In other matches, Suva defeated the level 24-15 at Rotodakambo Park in Osori, while Namosi edged the Sawa 31-30 at Nandavu Park in Lotoka. Karleni Tavi, FBC Sport. The Lautoka rugby side aims to maintain its performance in the Skipper Cup competition. The side secured its second win after edging out Nandi 22-20 at Prince Charles Park yesterday. The Maroons, who were trailing 23, but didn't lose hope as they closed the gap after a try to lock Epeli Randaniva. But it was a last-minute try to Lautoka's winger Eddie Stewart that gave them a 22-20 win over Nandi. Lautoka chair Tevita Momo Indonu says they have laid a platform for the Lautoka side. As I said last week after the game with uh, Yesawa, we'll keep on improving uh, on each game from now on. And uh, now we stand, uh, after today's game, we stand a good chance against Namusi. We're now looking forward uh, to the challenge uh, next week on Saturday. The capital side managed to bag another win after beating Tailevu 24-15 in its Skipper Cup match at Ratadakumbao Park this afternoon. The Super side made an early start, scoring a try in the first 10 minutes of the game before John Stewart crossed the Tailevu defence a few minutes later to extend their lead. Super scored three tries to take a 17-3 lead at halftime. The Tailevu side showed their tenacity in the second spell, converting a penalty and scoring two tries, but this wasn't enough as Suva managed to have the last say, extending their lead with eight-point difference.
Fiji Mbati winger Mikaele Ravalawa was instrumental in the St. George Illawarra Dragons, shocking 14 12 win over the Parramatta Eels last night. Ravalawa gave a brainstorming performance, scoring two tries in the first half and stopped opposing winger Michael Sivo from scoring one. With 21 minutes remaining in the game and the scoreboard locked at 12 all, a penalty kick to the Dragons gave them a two point lead and the win. The New South Wales Waratahs has moved to second spot in the Super Rugby standing after thrashing Western Force 28-8 last night. After taking a 16-8 lead into halftime, Jack Maddox and Henrys extended the Tars' lead in the second half with the try in the 44th and 53rd minutes of play. And in weather, cloudy conditions with some showers was experienced over the eastern and interior parts of the larger islands, fine apart from isolated showers elsewhere. A quick look at the weather map looking in the west, mainly pleasant conditions. Eastwards from Pacific Harbour to Suva, mostly sunny and windy conditions. It became cloudy by late afternoon. And up north, sunny to partly cloudy, possible isolated afternoon and evening showers. Now for the tides, it's sea moderate to fresh southerly winds, moderate to rough seas. Um, low tide is at 9.35 p.m. with high tide at 3.52 tomorrow morning. Sunrise is at 6.25. Now for tomorrow, expect cloudy periods with brief showers over the eastern parts and interior of the larger islands. Mainly fine weather elsewhere. And our further outlook, we're looking further on to Tuesday. Expect much of the similar conditions. Recapping the main stories for tonight, dark days will be over, shows Prime Minister. Combined effort needed to curb crime and Lifeline Fiji registers a majority of their calls from the north. Now for these stories and others, tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. Our poll question, we're asking, are you happy with the lifting of the Kawakawa and Donu ban? Visit our FBC website to answer. And you can send us newsworthy pictures to, and videos to email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj. Drop it in via Facebook page, FBC News, and our Twitter page at FBC underscore news. That's your news for tonight. Until tomorrow from the team and I, stay safe. Bye for now. And I'm from Kadavi. And Mirchi FM, it's hot. Mirchi FM, it's hot.